Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What's up? It's Cass. Today I want to do another uh, Alcohol Ink 101 painting. Today we're going to paint a rose. And before you dust off your compressor, you're not going to need it. You're really only going to need this. Why? This. You're just going to need a brush with your alcohol inks and some alcohol. This is going to be really simple. I guarantee you're going to like it. I really wanted to do a rose painting alcohol ink video because, you know, you Google how to paint a rose with alcohol ink and you will find 97,000 examples of how to make a rose-like image with an airbrush or with a compressor by making like an infinity ring with your ink. And sure you can do that and it produces absolutely beautiful looking roses. But what if you just want to take a paintbrush and paint a rose with a brush? And, ink, and that's it. That's what we're going to do today. So, first of all, the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need your syringe, like always, a brush. Pardon me, my brush is taped up because it's broken. I've got my palette, which you're going to need. Nothing crazy. A little bit of alcohol is not going to take very much. Probably you'll fill your syringe once and that'll be enough. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose my colors. And I don't know if you guys saw the last video that I made. I uh, did an unboxing with my Ranger inks and I remade my color splotches and these are my finished splotches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose my colors. I am not making a uh, photographic painting or anything. I'm not gonna do anything crazy here. I just wanna choose the colors that I want to use and I want to make kind of a, not necessarily a red rose or a pink rose, but kind of like a salmon colored rose, sort of like a warm peachy color. So that's what I'm going to go for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my swatches here and I'm going to choose dark, light and medium tones. I suggest you choose at least three colors for this. Yes, you're, you're not making a multicolored rose, but even if you make a very beautiful painting of a rose with one color, it no matter how well you achieve those values, it just doesn't have the visual pop that a composition with more than one color has. Monochromatic has its places, but not in this video. So we're going to pick at least three colors. Personally, I chose six. I don't know if I'm even going to use them all, but I want to have them at my disposal. So the dark that I chose, was staring at the end here, I chose uh, Rosewood. Just gonna find it, it's in my neutral tones. There we go. So this is going to be my dark, my Rosewood. I'm going to use, I'm gonna use Flamingo, I like that one. I'm going to use Salmon, Coral, I might use some Terracotta, and I want to use Honeycomb. So that's the six colors that I want to use. And we're going to start with our darks, bring in our medium tones and work on our lights after. Let's get started. So first of all, pause the video whenever you need to because I'm going to speed this up a lot to get it all in. It took me 35 minutes to do this painting and I'm going to speed it up to about double time. So don't worry if it seems like I'm working like a mad woman because it is not natural. <laughs> so right off the bat, start with the drawing. I know you can't really see my drawing on my paper, but that's because I did it with a light graphite because I don't want it to dirty up my inks. Take the time to make a nice drawing that you really like before you start because nothing messes up uh, a nice painting like a half-ass drawing underneath. So I'm starting, as I said, with my darks. I'm going in with rosewood. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my reference photos. I'm going to fill in the areas of my flower that are dark. All of the deep shadows in the center of the flower, in between the petals, where the light doesn't fall, that's where I'm going here. And now. Keep your brush relatively dry. Don't worry if your ink is evaporating a little bit. 
don't thin it down unless it dries up completely. You can see that my brush strokes are not beautiful. I've got a really messy, brushy stroke, but that's totally fine because you're just blocking these colors in. The beauty about these inks is that they reactivate when they touch. So as you go in with your medium tones, with your light tones, if you want to adjust the darks that you put in, you can. You can't take back the past, but you can rework it with these inks, and that is just beautiful. So don't worry about that. Take your time to go in around the petals where you see deep dark shadows go in with that lovely dark color. Now use whatever colors you want. I chose a particular spectrum because I wanted like a salmon-y colored rose. If you want a blue rose, go with blue colors. Have a, have a nice dark uh, indigo for your darks and uh, a periwinkle for your mid-tones and a patina for your lights. Do whatever you want. Use, use a light pink for your lights if you want. You, this is not rocket science. It's not brain surgery and you're not going to lose your job because you chose a color that somebody else didn't like. It's your world. Paint it the way you want it. I'm nearly done with my darks here. I'm just going to keep brushing in a little bit. You can see my ink is getting really dry now. So I'm going to hydrate a little bit. And I'm going to start in with coral. Now I'm not going to clean my brush before I go into the coral. I'm just going to let it dilute as I work into it. Because I'm working next to the darks. So it's okay if that color is a little bit darkened. What I'll do is I'll keep painting, keep painting, keep adding more coral to my palette and just let the rosewood wash out of the brush as I go. Now that's not to say that if I was changing colors radically that I wouldn't wash my brush properly. Of course, I would have to wash my brush. However, when I'm moving between similar colors like this, unless my brush is totally laden with color, I don't mind letting that, that first color wash out naturally. It all really depends on the effect that you're going and the colors you're working with. I'm making a big salmon colored rose and it doesn't matter to me too much if, oh, I've overworked my darks a little bit. My coral is not perfectly coral colored because I don't want people to look at it and see, oh, that's coral. I want them to look at it and see, oh, what a beautiful rose. It doesn't matter that the color is tainted by other colors. It doesn't matter that it touches other colors in your palette. Let them touch each other all they want. Play with the amount of alcohol in it to make a thinner wash like I am here around the exterior of my rose and see what different effects that you can get. You get a totally different effect with a brush that is nearly dry than you do with a brush that has a lot of alcohol and just a little bit of ink in it. With a lot of alcohol you can get a nearly watercolor like effect and you can also get a really neat dry brushy texture with a brush that has just a teeny tiny bit of dye in it so play with it that's essentially what this exercise is all about it's just practicing my representational painting with alcohol inks and brush and learning as I go I encourage you guys to do the same now I gotta apologize because uh, the glare on my paper it makes the left hand side of my paper uh, paler than the right and I'm sorry about that I did fart around with the lighting a lot uh, I never landed on something that I was really happy with so sorry about that okay now I'm gonna go in with my flamingo um, I'm adding a little bit of alcohol to it because I want it to be dilute I don't want it to be a super 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 bright pink I want it to be paler so you see I've cleaned out my brush just a little bit only only a little just to get the most of the dark color out of there and uh, now I've got a nice light dilute wash of flamingo and I'm going around doing my lighter tones. Remember these are not the absolute lightest tones. The palest that I'm going to go is with my very very pale watered down honeycomb color. So this is like my second palest value. Keep that in mind while you're painting because you don't want to overpaint. It is true that with alcohol inks, if you have painted over your whites too much, at least with narrow paper, you can go back and lift out, lift out color, lift out color until you're happy. But if you're using Yuko, you're screwed. So don't add too much color because you may have to take it out again. Just be careful to push back your darks, but not to cloud your lights too much.
Okay, so now I'm ready to add my two absolute lightest tones. I'm going to start with the salmon and do the honeycomb after. I want them to be nice and dilute. Uh, so here I'm cleaning my brush a little bit. Again, I'm not going too crazy, but I'm just cleaning the majority of that flamingo out of there, getting it a little bit, uh, a little bit paler, essentially. Still pink, but pale. So I'm going in with the salmon. And now I'm coming almost uh, up to the very edge of my whitest highlights. And quite frankly, in some places I'm going right over them because I, well, like I said, I'm going to lift out after. And, and it's okay if I darken some areas too much. It's okay if I need to lift out. I'm human. I make mistakes. It's normal. And you too, I think uh, you're probably human and it's normal that you make mistakes. Is the the entire future success of your art career riding on this one painting? Didn't think so. Okay, so now it's time for my last color that I'm going to be using, and it's going to be that honeycomb. So I'm going to dilute it down because, as you can see on my palette, the salmon, I didn't need to dilute it at all. It is very, 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 very dilute and pale already, but the honeycomb is extremely strongly colored. Love the color, but I don't want the strength here because I want it to be a nice light, light value. So I'm going to wet it down with some alcohol, as it were, and go in and fill in some nice tones here. I know you may feel like, oh, I'm painting a pink rose. Why am I putting yellow in there? This makes no sense. I feel lost. You know, just go with it. it there are so many colors in the world around us. So many colors that we don't see. So many colors that we don't think that we're seeing. You know, you look at a white flower and you think, oh, I'm seeing white. But you go to reproduce the way that flower really looks and... Yeah, maybe you use white, but you also might use a uh, periwinkle. You also might use a dove gray. You also might need pink. You might need yellow. You may need all different kinds of things. And I don't want my rose to look like a pink rose. I want it to look like a salmon -y rose. So I really, really want to bring out those yellowish highlights. That's going to give the effect that I'm looking for. And like I said, it's my world, so it's my choice, right? Okay, here when I'm mostly happy with my uh, my values and everything, I'm going to have a look back and look at areas on the edges of my petals that maybe I've darkened too much, areas where I want to lift out a little bit. And I'm just going to use some alcohol in my brush and just go in and lighten those areas out. You'll see as you add that alcohol to uh, those areas of your painting, everything there will just liquefy and start to move. And you can brush it out with your brush wipe your brush on your paper towel like I'm doing right now, blot and blot and lift and blot, and just be careful not to use too much alcohol at a time, and you'll be fine. Use too much alcohol at a time, and you'll just erase half of your painting, and it'll be a very good learning lesson, and it probably won't happen again. All right, you guys ready? We're going to add some water droplets. Now, this is a lot of fun with alcohol ink because it just wants to flow into a natural circle anyway. I really, really dig making water droplets with this ink. It's cool. Just take some nice clear alcohol and just make little drops with the tip of your brush on your painting. Be careful not to drip too much because you'll get a, a water droplet the size of a softball if you're not careful. But just wet your brush a little bit, go and drip and drip and drip and you'll see those little circles just appear in your painting. After you're happy with where your water droplets are and everything, you can go back with a little bit of ink and you can just paint a little, a little uh, reflection in your, in each drop with some pink or with some yellow, depending on where it is on your flower. And this is going to give it a nice, soft, beautiful look. I mean, there's just something lovely about raindrops or dewdrops on flowers and, you know, we just love them. Everybody does. I, I don't know anybody who 
has seen a rose covered in dewdrops and said, oh, gross. That's hideous. Again, your dewdrops don't have to be perfect. This is not a, a how to paint dewdrops tutorial. Maybe we'll do that at, at another time in the future. But right now we're just talking about painting this rose. So don't break your brain. Just add your little drops wherever you want. Add your little reflection. Don't be too hard on yourself. I'm happy with my little drops. I'm going to take out my Sharpie. I love to finish with Sharpie, as you probably already know. You don't have to do this, but uh, I'm going to. I'm going to finish it with a fine tip Sharpie, and I'm going to go through and, and outline my absolute darkest blacks. Push back the dark, dark, dark areas with a little bit of hatching. I really like mixing drawing and painting styles, and that is one of my absolute favorite things about Alcohol Ink, because it goes from drawing to painting from painting to drawing so easily and so fluidly, as it were, mind my pun, that uh, I just uh, I just adore it. I've never come across a medium that was so easy to integrate painting and drawing styles, and I dig it. So there we go. I'm happy with my study. I'm going to put my name on it. And uh, I thank you all for hanging out with me. Thank you for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was fun for you and you dug it. And I will see you all next time. <laughs>